Welcome to episode two of Perspectums with Miss Circle and Miss Grammy. Ladies? Ladies? <laughs> Circles, are you still muted? Cycle. Yes, Circles is still muted. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we have a big announcement, right? Ah, yes, yes. we do. Yes, we do. Yes. Um, the crazy Grammy lady and the farmer tied the knot this morning with the sun rising behind us in front of an old burnt-out church. Ah, oh, congratulations, Mary. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Are you getting so, theory from it? Am I getting what? Are you getting um, emotional from talking about it? Yeah, a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it comes across that well, does it? <laughs> yes. Did you have a wedding picture taken in all this digital world? Um, actually, one of his co-workers uh, took some pictures with his camera, but I need to get him a little uh, flash drive card, and mm -hmm. he will send pictures. But it's it's so funny, you know, because, I mean, it, it's today's just another day like any other day. We just made something official, officially official. But um, he wore his bib overalls and a work shirt and a work hat. And I wore a dress made out of flower sacks and my gardening hat. And so, um, so and let me just get this right. You live in a small town in Kansas, right? Yes. Where yes. it's every day just another ordinary morning where a blue-haired lady and a farmer gets married in front of a rundown church. <laughs> Well, no, that's not necessarily an everyday thing, but. Okay, because uh, I was going to go with, I'm going to go to Kansas. We're going to go to Walmart in Kansas. That's bound to be real fucking crazy. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, I can't really say that it's not something special because, yeah, just even just thinking about it, it's like, holy carp, I yeah. actually did this again. <laughs> And he actually did this again because we both come from pretty stormy relationships. But we know what, you know, what what we don't want. And we have found that we are the matched bookend, <laughs> our match set. Yes. So. Because to me, because um, I was going to do this show about Rob's Law, right? Uh-huh. Um, and... Uh, uh, for your, those of you who don't know what Rob's law is, <laughs> um, it is, and I'm going to just say it like this. This is how Rob works said it, and it's his law. So he said, there is only one right that matters, the right to self-ownership. And I'm, I turned that into a law. I think that's a law. I think it is. Yeah. And I think it is a natural law, a universal yeah. law. Yes. But then you go and get married on the same day. And I go, wow, see, because marriage to me... It's about ownership, right? See, and I don't know that it's necessarily ownership as it is so much deciding that, yeah, you want to share your life. I mean, he he doesn't own me, and I don't own him. But, you know, we still own each other. We're still complete entities all in, in and of ourselves, and yet we've decided to share our time together. So I don't really see it as an ownership thing. It's more of a sharing thing. Because it is really, um, uh, and, and this, this is part of the topic of today, right? Because it uh -huh. is really a mental state. It's all about what you define and what you attach to that. Yes. Now, I can say for me, getting married was completely about ownership. And, and you know, actually in the, the doing the actual yeah, the legal machines. crap, it does mean that I own him and he owns me. But that's that's the legal societal nonsense that gets put on top of it all. When 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 me and me and uh, Flash got married, we had a talk we, we did that talk about um this is me surrendering my sovereignty and, and my self ownership and my freedom to you. Because I'm going to tie myself to you now, and I'm going to give away, and I'm going to we're going to do a joint ownership. So now we're uh, 
<laughs> we're a corporation, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you are incorporated. <laughs> uh, and so, now so I, we, I, that was for us. The ritual there was for us to do that ownership, to be very uh, honest about uh, now I own you and you own me. See, and, and possibly for, you know, because of the kind of work that you do and, and all that fun stuff, you guys see it as, I personally don't see it as a, as an owning thing. I think oh, it, I see it more as a, yes, I do see it as a binding thing, as a, as a, mm. as a weaving together of two different, you know, it's like, you know, it's like uh, crocheting, you know, or weaving, you know, you're, you're weaving together two different strands and making something wonderful out of it. Hopefully yeah. wonderful out of it. Some people, when they start weaving those strands together, it's like, egad, cut the string and run away. But and see the, um, and, and this, because um, the, the ability we have, to make a marriage um, what it is to us, right? Uh huh. To defining uh, and and to define it so differently as you and me do. And right? yet, I think we both are very, very content. Yes. With our own perspectives, and we're basically doing the same thing. We're just describing it or defining it differently. That's but, but exactly. But in that um, is the ability to define your own world, right? Yes. Yes. That is, that, that's the beauty of this moment where you and me did the same thing in two different ways. I don't have blue hair. It didn't happen in Kansas. Uh, <laughs> in front of a burnt out and, church. And you didn't get <laughs> married by a little hobbit in a green hoodie. Um <laughs> At a big uh, gay party in all of Copenhagen, we did right. So two yeah. very different things um, <laughs> for two very different reasons, and with two different, very different meanings. <clears throat> and yet, it's the same. The real reason, the really deep reason, is still the same. Yeah, it's the same. We did the same act. Right? We did the same act, and the feelings I think are are the same. Yes. We just but, describe them differently because but what that's we did was, our mind works it. Yes. But what you and me are doing, right, is we're uh -huh. now exercising our abilities and our capabilities to creating our own um, understanding and our own perception and definitely our own conceptual um, concept of what is, right? Uh -huh. The act we did is. Mm -hmm. And and in that, right, we come back to that self-ownership. Yep. Because if we break down Rob's law, it's, it's, there's only one right that matters, the right to self-ownership. Yep. And, and I, um, I know we disagree a little on um, the definition or the understanding of what rights are. Um, I'm going to... And and we had a nice conversation about that made me a lot wiser too on my definition from hearing you, Mary, when when we were talking before the show. So thank you very much. Oh, um, I don't know what I did, but you're welcome. Well, thank you for your <laughs> perspective, and um, and that I will take that into mind. But um, I know we, we I think we agreed that um, the physical manifestation of a right. Is a is the ability to do something? Yes. Right. And it is intrinsic. Yes. It has nothing to do with society or anyone no. else. No. Because um, so when we talk about rights, we are also talking about capabilities you hold as a human being. Yeah. Things you are born from nature to mm -hmm. be able to do and things that define us as human beings our capabilities right yeah okay can we then can we then say that's our consensus about rights <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 except i would add that that if you claim it to be or if you deem it to be a right for yourself then you also have to admit that that right belongs to everyone else 
because rights are not picking and choosing. No. If one has them, they all have them. Yes. I, I'm, it, it goes against my understanding of rights, but I'm, I can, I'm agreeing with you in the sense of your definition of rights. Oh. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying I, I'm agreeing with you, even though it goes against my whole yeah. understanding and definition of what rights are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And see, that's that's the wonderful thing about conversing. And I know your hubby has a problem with, he thinks that uh, communication <laughs> is the biggest problem in the world. Yeah. And it can very well be. But I think the only reason communication is a bad thing it's because one or both that are involved in the communication process are not willing to be open enough to yes. listen to another perspective, consider another perspective, and then even if they don't agree with that other perspective, then say, okay, that's your perspective. I'm going to keep on with mine and just live and let live. That's... There's too many people that think it's my way or the highway, damn it, because I've got rights. Oh, really? Yes. Well, if you've got them, so do I. Guess what? Ding, ding, but ding. But then, but exact, but see, then we're back to the, to, um, cause it, you know, you, you gotta be able to do and you gotta have the capability to do whatever a right is. Otherwise, it's silly. I can grant you, we, we can all just say, I have a right to fly by flopping my ears. Perfect. You got the right. There you go. But if you're not able to fly by flopping your ears. So then it so, is just basically an imaginative yeah. privilege. So, so, so um, to get back to Rob's law, right? Mm -hmm. If the right of cell ownership is, is, if there's a right of cell ownership, we have to be capable of self ownership. And I'm going to say every human being is from birth capable of self ownership. It is the natural state. That is how real life is. Yes. Yes. I agree with that, right? Yes. If you got married. It's just society that gets in there and starts messing with things. So really, if um, then I was going to say that then you already have that right. You, mm -hmm. we, you, me, and all people right now, no matter where they are, even in, uh, I don't know, horrible places I read that are horrible because I live in the west or the north, right? Um, even in bumfuck north, Egypt, yeah. wherever the hell that yeah, is. Whatever, right? You, mm -hmm. Everybody has right now the right of self-ownership because they have the capability of it. They're born with it. Yes. 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 So, so... so and especially where we are. So what is um, standing in our way? W why is it that um, we, uh, we're, we, we live in a world where we don't think we have self-ownership? Because I think long <clears throat> time ago, somebody sold a bill of goods and, and quite a few people bought it enough to where those people became able to start bullying others, yeah. whether it was a soft bully or a actual in-your-face bully, to tell them, I have it, so you have to have it too. Yes, because I understand the whole right issue, and it, it it's, you know, I really had a, I didn't want to use the word, but Rob used the word in his, uh, when he formulated Rob's law, right, so I had to mm -hmm. use the word because it goes into all this, and I understand who is defining rights and all that, but that was not my point of the whole thing. My point was to get over to the capabilities, right? Uh-huh. The, the ability we have as human beings and that we are born with, that is the natural given to self-ownership, in that because you have the capability, right, uh -huh. in that right now, and and you're you have the right. That right is already given to you, right? It's already there, or however, given, create, whatever. The right is already there because you have the ability. Yes. And the only the only thing that society does is by the wave of a magic societal wand, it says that right 
that you were born with, we are now going to deem that a privilege. And we'll be able to take it away from you whenever we want to. So that's, that's now. Where, exactly. That's where the outside and the law thing and all that starts interfering with, uh, with what is truly important. Because, and I want to get into this, right? Uh-huh. I want to get into this, that what stands in my way, in your way, in everybody's way, is social structures. Yes. Talking expectations. Again, we did, we went through this again. We talked about this Friday, last Friday, right? Uh huh. We talked about the attachments and the expectations and, and how we put that on ourselves and on others and, and on everything. And that truly is, again, what stands in your way of the self ownership. And and it's something that we do to ourselves because once we allow someone else yeah. into our minds to start making decrees and telling us how things are, yes, yeah. that's when we start acquiescing some of our ability to mm-hmm. over to outside yeah. when actually it's all internal. Yes. Rights are basically internal. Uh, you know, as we're talking, I'm I'm formulating this. A right is actually an internal thing. It's something of and inside yourself. Anything external is social constructs and society telling you, "Oh no, that's a privilege," or you have to have permission, or we someone has to condone that. It's rights are in an internal intrinsic part of any entity yes. and these social structures all these weird silly rules that for most of us don't really make sense when we start looking at them individually right when right we start really you know applying a little bit of just human critical thought a little bit of doubt they fall apart most of them right uh-huh and uh one thing <laughs> Is um, those when you give them um, when you give them validity or you give them credit when you give them physical um, form and you start applying matter to them, right? Uh-huh. Then those are what stands in your way of that self ownership that you have. Uh huh. Right? Uh huh. You have it. And you know what else, the, with the physicality and stuff, self-ownership really has absolutely nothing to do with, with your body, with your physical body. No. Nope. In, in a, in the, in the way of saying, you know, I am consciousness. I am occupying this body right now to motivate throughout this physical realm, but I am, I am this entity. This intelligent energy, if you will, that just kind of stepped into a suit. But you are also a physical being. But that was also, I, here we go with that belief thingy, and inside every belief is a lie. But I believe, I think, that, you know, this, this conscious energy decides that it wants to have this physical experience. And so it makes that conscious, sovereign decision to enter into a physical body to partake and participate in a physical experience. Okay, because I'm going to go with, um, first of all, um, uh, I'm going to go with a more Tao. Okay. Uh, Body, mind, uh, conscious is what's here. That is the Tao. Uh, I am my uh, physical being is not uh, separated or two different things from my consciousness and and um, and my mind. We we're all in this together, right? This uh-huh. is what we are. Um, and, and I uh, think that's part because part of that is because we are all different parts of a collective consciousness or source, if you will. Yes. You know, because I, I really think each one of us is just a little bit of source that's out there experiencing life from this unique perspective. 
And just look at all of the unique perspectives. Sources getting all of this information right now, if you believe the numbers, over 7 billion different perspectives are all coming into source right now because it's a collective consciousness, but each little piece of that collective consciousness is a sovereign in and of itself because it's it's experiencing things from its perspective. Um, that makes sense? Yeah, but I'm going to go with um, the whole physical world. Uh-huh. It's um, 90% of your sensuality and your experiences and your um, cognitive processes. Oh, yes. And, that's, uh, that's what helps um, make that perspective is all of and the experiences therefore, you get. Therefore, I cannot separate um, my consciousness, my uh, learning being from my physical world and the physical body I'm in. You know, I actually listened to, you ever uh, listen to Abraham Hicks? No. Um, it's basically a channeled, um, what is it? Gosh darn it. Uh, well, you can YouTube Abraham Hicks. In any case, the gal Esther that does, that is the person that channels Abraham, her husband passed several years ago. And she was really mad when he passed from the physical realm and then she started noticing little things and realizing that he was still communicating with her and then she got to where she could actually be open for this and she asked him one time why he left and he said well I didn't really leave you I just dropped the physical body and I went back to home but I do kind of miss the physical body because I really enjoyed kisses and chocolate." Yes. <laughs> and see, without the physical body, you can't experience a lot of those things, you know. So you can be all ami, ami, ami and spiritual and shit, but man, kisses and chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah, and... but I'm, I'm not even going to separate it that much, Mary. Um, okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to say, because, <clears throat> um, Part of um, the, I'm I'm going to take this because I'm going to tie this back to where you're saying, okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take I'm going to um because um I'm going to go from from the rights and the abilities and the self ownership and um in that and I and you know all that self ownership comes back to freedom, right? And and uh, what freedom is and um. I agree with you. Freedom is is a, is a state of mind. Yes. Um, it's a mindset you go into. Yes. Um, and for me, uh, uh, freedom has nothing to do with independency or dependency or any of that. Uh, it's got nothing to do with uh, financial independency. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I personally, I live in a society where a lot of people define freedom as uh, financial independence. Mm -hmm. the, the, to have enough to not owe anything and not needing to do anything, to be free of financial obligations, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, I'm going to define freedom as... Uh, and it, this is a capability too, right? It's a right, it's a capability. But freedom is not um, making choices, but uh, creating choices. Yes. So when you create choices and you're not just making them from whatever the world wants you to do and gives you of choices, but when you uh, create choices, that is where that is freedom to me. That is where you have self ownership. That is what defines freedom to me. Yes, yes. Because uh, some people think that that being free is having like free will, and then they confuse free will with all kinds of other things as well. And free will is more of a I myself am free to make a decision or not make a decision. Yes. To pay. 
you know, dependent upon how I see things at the time. And I am also free to deal with the repercussions or rewards of that choice of whereas true freedom, you create all of these possibilities and then you go, oh, wow. And I myself created these possibilities and I think I will choose and then maybe I will choose or maybe I will just choose to look at them for a while and then go, okay. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, it, it really is. It's a difference between making a decision and creating. Yes. And, and there, that for me is the freedom to, and, and, uh, <clears throat> I talk to pancakes about this and it's very interesting, right? Um, I see freedom as being in resistance with the consensus that the world tries to give you. Right? Uh-huh. And uh, Pancakes, he says, there's never freedom in being in resistance. <laughs> and I like that, too. So I'm kind of like, okay, that, uh, right. But I'm still going to go with that. Whenever you, you're in resistance of the obvious consensus, and you're creating new choices. That is where your freedom exists. That is where freedom lives. And that starts with, um, and this comes back to that, one of the key foundation to uh, getting self-ownership, to obtaining it, you got it already, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> just, just recognizing. Start, yes, but to build up the capability to, uh, do it, right? Because that's really what it's all about. To exercise. Are you capable yeah. of exercise, of doing, of being self-owned, right? Uh -huh. And from that comes the, the, and this is, and this is where I tie it in with what are humans, right? Because to me, human beings, and I'm just going to keep it in this realm and in this lifespan and in all this, but humans to me are, um, Highly skilled beings in cognitive processes. That's truly our definition. We are yes. highly advanced cognitive beings. Yes. And um, and and if we, I'm just gonna, you know, just so we understand what cognition is. <laughs> I'm just gonna read the definition from Wikipedia, real short, right? Okay. Okay, cognition is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. It encompasses many aspects of intellectual functions and processes such as attention, the formation of knowledge, memory, working memory, judgment, evaluation, reasoning, problem solving, decision making, and they forget the most important, if you ask me, which is imagination and creativity, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But still, we are back to the um, cognition. Mm -hmm. And that is truly the how how your ability to obtain knowledge and understand and build skills and build the understanding of how you are and how this is, right? Uh-huh. So, um, okay, one of the key foundations. Yes. I just... I just want to say that there's an awful lot of, I mean, everybody is cognitive, I think. Everybody yep. is cognitive. But there are very, there are a very lot, large amount of people that are willfully ignorant. And you can be cognitive and willfully ignorant at the same time. Yep. Because ignorance or to be willfully ignorant is to know that there is another option and to on purpose, ignore it because it is not comfortable for what your current perception is. Yes, because it is it is a, an ability <laughs> all humans have, right? Uh huh. Yeah, unless you're deaf mute and something you can't think and you're brain damaged or whatever. Okay, sorry about it, but then you don't have cognition. But otherwise, then that's something all humans have. I'm not saying that people who don't have cognition is not human. I don't want to be quoted for that. See, and I, I think, you know, sometimes just because we think people are brain damaged or whatever, we don't know what's going on inside there. No. But I'm just going to say cognition is a, um, it's a human capability. Yes. The thing is, you got to exercise it. Oh, yes. 
and and um, you're gonna use it, and you gotta understand it to use it. And the more uh, you understand and focus on uh, using uh, capability in a way you you want it, the better you're gonna be at doing that. That's you know practice, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So if self ownership truly comes from, if you ask me about. Um, <laughs> your imagination and your cognitive strength. How how aware and how much do you practice your cognition and how much are you aware of what it does to you and how it works? And do you take it back? <coughs> hmm. Yeah. Hmm. It's, Vinny has a question for us. I think he's still typing it, but... Okay, but I'm not sure I want to take Vinny's question. But let's see. if <laughs> he it fits with what I'm going to say, then. Uh... When does self ownership begin and end? It has no beginning and it has no end, or it ends and begins. Okay. All at the same time. <clears throat> but what you really want to is um, get back to how, how are you? How do you practice it, right? Not when does other people. Uh, uh, Start defining when it ends or begins for you. What does it matter, Vinny? Does your question even matter, Vinny? Because self-ownership is something you do for you. So it doesn't really matter how other people define when it ends or begins for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's his, you know, he can ask us when we think self-ownership no, begins important. and ends, but that's just for us. It's not that's necessarily not, for him. I'm not going to take Vinny's questions. So, um, because I'm not going to let Vinny really control this conversation, right? Um, I'm, I want to really talk about how to um, and what it means to create choices, to take upon that thing of choices, right? Okay. So the whole um, um, how how um, imagination and creativity. It's just going to um, be how you unlock into that self-ownership. Oh, yeah. Yes. And truly, when you start, because this is what happens, and this is what scares me a little, is that um, cognition, right? Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's your senses. Your body, your physical being is, is, uh, is a big part of that. And, um, cause we are physical beings that evolved in a physical world. Uh, no matter how we believe that we got into the physical or what's going to happen afterwards or how we are all this, um, humans were evolved in a physical world and we are physical beings. Yes, and so, basically we're all playing the same game. Yes. It's just that right now with society, we are allowing society to dictate rules yes. that only apply when society decides yes. that it's going to apply them. But what happens is, um, and if we want to take our, uh, our and start practicing the self-ownership we have, and I really think that, um, that is one of the key uh, elements in uh, healing this planet again. Uh, to actually, f um, I, I think that that is why I wanted to cover uh, Rob's law, is that uh, if humans are going to um, transcend uh, how we are stuck right now in the energies we are stuck in right now, right? If we're going to move from that, I think self-ownership is one of the mm, most important moves to that. Oh, yeah. And see, that's one of those things that I think people, and I, I listened to a Beats Plus video the other day, and bless his heart, he's, he's sharp as a tack and, and gives a lot of really good information. But as I was listening to him, I was thinking, wow, that's really good information to know. That's really cool. And then I got to thinking, you know what? If if we don't like what's going on, really all we have to do, cognition, 
imagination, creating choices. We, inside of our mind, use our imagination to create a different vibe, to change our frequency from this one that is stuck in this bicker, bicker, his fault, be afraid of the other, yada, yada, BS that society seems to be stuck in right now. And I think if each one of us, in our own way, just goes back inside of ourselves and says, okay, I don't like the way things are working, so I'm going to use my imagination and I am going to create a different outlook on things. But you, And yeah. that actually affects a change within yourself. And then when you interact with someone else and they see that change, then it affects them as well. Positive or negative is up to them, but it still affects a change that it puts out into the rest of the world. And I think when each person starts you know, when they honestly go within themselves to find find their their place of joy, their place of contentment, their place of self-ownership, because I don't think you can really, really have self-ownership if it's not a place of contentment and joy. I'm, I'm just, yes, but I'm, 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 <clears throat> um, I'm just saying that in a time where it gets to me more and more um, critical, that mm -hmm. human beings begin to understand what they truly are. Amazing, are creative, and imaginative people and creators. We, innovators. Yes. we have way seers. The Tao is talking to us, and we are able to listen and do. And we are physical beings. So yes. we're in the physical world. We have hands and arms, and we can create things. Yes. So and 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 what I am in now is um um see um, we are we are creating no, 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 beings no, no, and no. then when we step up and decide world, to co-create no, wow yes, but it, no but Mary in a world where where um the cognitive processes to really understand them and to 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 start learning to really learn we gotta need the physical world. And right now, we're becoming more and more digital, less and less physical world. And it is harming our cognition because our senses are not being used in True. that process. Um, and, and we need our cognition more than anything. We need to step away from the screens, to step okay. away and to start realizing that in this now where your body and your mind and your conscious soul spirit define it however you want your conscious how that is aligned and that truly what a great and creative being that becomes when yeah. those two are aligned when you get them all balanced and working together and communicating with each other you know the body the mind and the consciousness and they're all working together as a team but you can't you know they can't all work together as a team if you're just using the mind and the consciousness you know that's and what why they are teaching children right now and um this horrified me i just we read it there was just a big survey made in denmark that showed that we lost most of a child generation in learning because we gave them digital um tools to learn from yeah, and those digital tools, those kids are looking at them like, wow, I can do this and this and this and this. And what they don't realize is inside their mind, they have ever so much more, exponentially no, more no, 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 no. than what that this little tool so can do. Yes, but this is what happened to those Danish kids that were given uh, iPads and Kindles to read on instead of books. Uh, computers to write on instead of paper and pencil, right? They what lost happened the to those? Yeah, they, they lost, lost that tactile connection. They lost their ability yeah. and their um, want and wish and curiosity and desire to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are, truly, we are yeah. truly physical beings, right? Oh, yeah. You need that physical connection, that need to go out and touch. Yes. You know, like, go out so, and play in the dirt. It's so, good for you. So when you're going to learn something, you want to be in that physical one, too. 
Oh yeah. And this becomes very important to us. It becomes very important to learn that, to remember that and to understand that 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 is that is how and if we want to be self owning. If you want to yeah, if you want to do the whole self owning take control of your own path and in your own learning and your creativity and your imagination and you're gonna to have to use those as your um just as much a skill as walking or talking or writing or um what looking and seeing they're just as much a skill as that. Oh yeah. And they're necessary skills. My goodness. I mean, you know, have you ever watched a baby learning how to walk? Hmm? And if you actually just if you pay real close attention to their face and stuff, all well, that you can see the gears running, mm. yeah. and it's it's not necessarily a, a thinking of now I'm going to have to pull myself up. Now I'm going to have to put. It's yeah. like the body is doing all of the mechanics and all of the co- the communicating. Just it's just a natural thing, but it's yeah. it's. It's expressing itself in the physical activity of learning to stand and to walk. And I, I have to thank my grandkids for that because wow, they, they taught me to really concentrate on just, you know, how amazing it is to go through the process of learning how mm. to do all that stuff and how your body communicates without saying a word. Yes. But it's all but, in that physical, and it's it's a must-have. You need to have that in order to develop yeah. other abilities. So I was I would say that one of the most important things, um, if you wanna, um, I'm gonna say obtain or get, and it's just for the ease of it, right? But if mm-hmm. you wanna obtain self ownership, and and I, I know I, I I fully understand you already have it. But you don't have yeah. anything you're not using. You're not capable of using, right? Yeah. Unless you have the capability, it's like having the right to fly by flopping your ears. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you start being capable of of self-owning, <laughs> then you have it. Then it's there. Then it's yours. Right? It was always yours. Oh, yeah. Well, Yeah. Yeah, it's and like from that you you have to, and I really think um, that the Rob of law of the the law of Rob Rob's law, right? Mm-hmm. I really think that is um, about creating or making or creating the choice of um, learning, of constantly learning. Of using and exercising your cognition, your creativity, of constantly learning and, and deriving you know, if, from if the you don't use, past, yeah, if you don't use it, you lose yes. it. It atrophies. Yes, and apply that to create choices for yourself and the life you're going to live. Yes, yes. And I think in that, that is then you reach self ownership, and that is your way to it, and that is. <clears throat> Um, not doing that or not um, seeing that or not even knowing that, that is um, what stands in your way of obtaining it or living it. Yeah. And you know, you're saying about constantly learning. That reminded me, and I'm going to butcher the quote, but Mark Twain said something about the day you stop learning is the day you die. Yes. Because you basically shut down. I have nothing else to learn. Okay. Poof. Really? Yeah. And then you come back and, and this is really um then you come back to that at um your cognitions um or or your cognitive processes are really once you start um understanding them and how they work. And what they do to you and how mind <laughs> works, because this is also a mind thing. And you got to understand how mind works and what mind creates in your world and in your consciousness when it does this, right? Um, and, and that leads into the whole um, um, uh, 
Understanding what conclusions are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if you're going to learn all your life, um, you got to be very conscious and using conclusions um, to get you on your path, right? Mm-hmm. Would you not say? Yeah. You know, and yet coming to a conclusion on something doesn't necessarily mean it's over. It's just, okay, at this point in time, right now, I have concluded that. But in the next five minutes, you might conclude that, hey, mm-hmm. what that conclusion I came to before eh, wasn't quite right, but... Now I've come to this conclusion. So maybe it's just a never-ending process of coming to conclusions. Yes. Because, cause, um, you know, I was going to say, you know, conclusions are like rocks, right? Uh-huh. Uh, you can sit on them and take a break from your walking and, and make them into landmarks. You know, write something on the rock and make sure that you understand there's a landmark. I already, okay, whatever is behind this, I already looked it through. Uh, you can make it a pat. It is, right? Someone so. made pet rocks and made a lot of money. Yeah. So I'm going to go with, like, conclusions or, you know, um, rocks on your pet, right? You can use them to sit on. But sometimes they just become this big giant wall that, uh, in front of you that, you know, takes away your sight. Sometimes you can jump to a conclusion and not quite reach it. Exactly. Sometimes you can trip over your own conclusions and face plant. So so if you're not um, really aware of uh, the conclusions you put on your path and how they are landmarked, you, you start blocking yourself from all this knowledge, right? Uh-huh. And the learning and the flow of things, right? And then we're kind of back to the attachments. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you get strongly attached to a conclusion, then you tend to, it becomes a ball and chain then because it keeps you anchored until to where you can't move forward and see. Maybe there's another conclusion right around the corner, but no, no, you're stuck to this one right here. Yes. And and that's the real thing, right? You, if you want to be learning and you want to be deriving meaning, <clears throat> it, you cannot live without rocks to sit on and landmarks, because then you're just going to be waving around in the landscape, right? Yep. Um, but you can't have walls either. So you you <clears throat> you got to look at at your own cognition from time to time, right? The whole path of where am I going and how am I how am I walking there? And how restricted are my walk there? Yeah. Am I am I open to learn something or am I not open, right? And some things you will see, no, I'm not open to that one. I did that one a thousand times and the rock is still there. Yep. That's a pretty good rock, right? Yeah. I'm gonna go over that rock. Um But um you gotta be able in when you go to art school and I had a lot of different art teachers and they all told me about kill your darlings. Um and it, you know so when you go to art school you're you're school to learn to um that thing in that you painted that you like the most <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's probably fucking up your entire painting. Uh, first of all, you gave it too much attention. You fell in love with it. It stands out from the other one. It's probably um, too overdone. Um, so you, you really got to look at what you gave too much love and that you fell in love with and wipe it out. Sometimes it can be that you get too overly attached to it and therefore nothing else lives up to the attachment that yes. you put on whatever that is. And yeah. so then you feel as though you can't accomplish anything more. You can't do anything better yeah. because I did this one and it's a masterpiece. I'll never be able to do anything like that again. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it becomes it becomes a prison cell. Yeah, it can be. And, and I really think that the um, – and this comes back to the creating choices, right? Uh-huh. Because it's easy – uh, to just choose between what is laid out for you. 
And especially, I don't know, I have never been to America, but in Denmark, people often confuse freedom with the um, having many choices. I even think the old prime minister, he stated that in a speech here. We want to increase people's uh, personal freedom, so we're going to give you a lot more choices. Yeah, and how can you increase increase freedom? That's like having a bigger half. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. You either have freedom or you don't. It's, yeah. There is no increasing freedom because you either have it. And that is the illusion. That is the illusion. And this is, that is really why your creativity and your, um, imagination are, the more you can discipline it and sharpen it and use it, um, the more you're gonna obtain that freedom and be able to create for yourself. And not just take those laid out choices. Even though sometimes, and no, not even sometimes, a lot of times, your mind uh, mixed with all those social structures are going to give you dualistic choices, binary dualistic choices. And you know, I know one thing, Mary, and I will promise everybody this, that whatever life or anything gives you binary choices or dualistic choices, you can do A or B. Somebody is either lying to you or trying to force you to something. Yeah, because they're also hiding. C D E F G H I K and seven and blue and chew gum. Don't even be restricted by the alphabet. And you know, purple peanut butter. Yes, because sometimes when when life wants to do A, B, and C, you gotta say blue. Oh, yeah. And just completely do something else. And that is where the creativity and the understanding that all that, all those choices, right? Mm-hmm. They come from social structures that was defined by people that, you know, are dead. Yes. They died a long time ago. Most yes. of the social structures we live by are just made up by human beings that died a long time ago. And we're still trying to cash the check that they wrote for us yeah. a thousand years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and true, when when but that takes, you know, if you want that right, uh huh. You gotta build up that capability. Yep. Otherwise it's just, you know, the right to fly. <laughs> just call me Dumbo. Mm, I have yes. ears, I can fly. <laughs> um, and then we, you know, uh, I think I'm going to end it. Um, you got anything you want to end it with, Mary? Except for congratulations on um, mm. being a bookkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And writing books, writing yes. new stories. I, I think this next one will be, and so begins our happily ever after. Oh, Yes. I like because, that. Yes. Cuz I'm going to end this with um I grew up with uh PB Longstocking as as one of the TV characters we watched, right? Uh-huh. And uh uh PB Longstocking said something that um that I think will end this perfectly. Um okay. so I'm going to end it with a PB Longstocking quote. Okay. Uh and uh PP Longstocking and this is really the law of PP meeting the law of Rob. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. And she said, um well her, the one who wrote the stories for her, right? Uh said, uh I have never done that before, so I'm probably very good at it. There you go. Yes. Okay. I have one thing to add to that. Yes. I got told one time it's been a while back now. Why don't you just act your age? <laughs> and being smart assy me, I looked at him and said, "But I've never been this age before, so yes. I'm winging it." Yes. But truly, um just, you know, have have uh some kind of trust that uh when it comes to uh your being creative and imaginative and using those um powers 
just because you've never done it before doesn't mean you <laughs> probably means you're going to be very good at it. Well, I'm always good at everything I do because if I'm yes. not good at it, I don't do it. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> so, congratulations, Marion. Thank you very much for helping out Krimnir. Oh, and thank you, Circles, and everybody for listening in, and thank you very much, Grimmy, for helping yes. us out as and, well. Uh, and uh, one last thing, then if you want to argue about uh, definitions of self-ownership, then uh, let's do that on another radio show. There you go. Yay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, thanks, uh, Eric and Grams, and uh, also congratulations on your nuptials there. Thank you. <laughs> nuptials. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the proper term, is it not? I believe it is, but yeah. it sounds so nuppy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks everybody for tuning in uh, tonight. Freakers Ball will not be Freakers Ball. It'll be Balls to the Wall. Uh, Moose Girls going out. I do believe there will be a dark table tomorrow, although Grammy won't be there. So uh, check it out. Just stay tuned on RLM Radio. Thanks everybody. I think that's it. Bye. Yep. Bye. <laughs>